And then as we, as we go along in the session, if you have a question that pops up, feel free to type it in the chat and I'll try to find some time along the way to stop and, and answer questions as we go. But we will definitely be um, answering questions. I'll leave a specific time at the end of it for answering questions as well. But if something comes up in media, I'll be happy to check that out. Ithaca, New York, just up the hill and over from me, like 30 miles away. That's awesome. And I see that Don Rivero's in here. Hi, Don. Fellow Little Kids Rock teacher there. Arizona, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana, do you know Laura Steigerwald McCoy? That's what I want to know. David Grenier, I see you. Another little kids rocker there. Poughkeepsie. Fun fact, I had the hardest time learning how to say Poughkeepsie. I always say Poughkeepsie. So I still I still slip and say it. <laughs> well, this is a great mix of what people are teaching and different levels and different backgrounds and different areas of the United States. This is awesome. Syracuse, New York. Yeah, go orange. By Watertown. I went to Potsdam, so. I am very familiar with Watertown. Manitoba, Canada, holy cow, we're international. <laughs> this is awesome, I love this. Well, tell Laura McCoy that I said hello. I love her to pieces and I call her the homecoming queen because that's what she is. <laughs> All right, keep on, keep on typing away and I'll come back and check that out in a little while. We have about, almost about 40 people here, so I'll go ahead and get started. And again, I'll be happy to share out a link where you can pick up this recording later. Um, I'm gonna give you um, access to my website where you can, I'll just have like a download link for you to get it at a later time, okay? Because it will take some time for it to process before I can pass that on. All right, without further ado, here we go. So I know that um, one of the things that are on the forefront of our minds as we go forth into this realm of online music education, which is the exact opposite of what we do pretty much, um, is how do we collect student work that's like viable and not just theory worksheets and paper pushing, so to speak, but digital paper pushing. But there are other ways to collect authentic student work and provide them um, beneficial feedback for them as well. So I'm gonna be talking about um, how to use assignments to collect and, and forms to collect student work and what that looks like both from the teacher side and from the student side as well. I wish that there was a way in Google Classroom where we could view it as a student, but that feature is unavailable. I begged and pleaded our district to let me have a dummy account and they gave me access to like the sub login, which happened to work and I didn't have to activate it. So that might be something to ask about because that's been supremely helpful um, for me along the way to kind of test things out as a student. But I will say this, it doesn't look much different than what we have access to. And I'll be talking a lot about the, the primary focus of this is about using Google Forms to collect and organize a variety of files and how to assess them. Yes, this is being recorded, so if you can't stay at night, then you can check it out. Um, my website is chrisgilbertmusic.com, so I can just put that out there. I'll type that in there right now so you can have that in case you have to leave. Yeah, chrisgilbertmusic.com. So that's my website, and that's where I'll post a link where you can get access to the recording, okay? All right. Um, Anyway, as I was saying, we're gonna be talking a lot about using Google Forms on how to collect and organize a variety of files. And also the, real, the coolest feature of all is releasing and importing grades from the Google Form quizzes straight to your classroom gradebook without having to hand enter 2,429 grades individually. So as most of you know, and maybe if you don't know, but um, Google Classroom allows you to work with a lot of different types of files and documents, which is a huge benefit. Um, any, everything from Google Docs to Sheets, um, forms, drawings, slides, do pre-made documents from your Google Drive or external like documents from your computer, 
um, a link to a website or or YouTube link. So there's a variety of things that can be both created and shared in Google Classroom. But what some people may not realize is that on the student side, there's a variety of different um, files that students can share. And so this gives you the ability to collect from the students documents, whether it's like Word or um, Google Doc, spreadsheets, PDFs, videos, presentations, drawings, uh, like Google Drawings, images, and audio. So, and especially the video and audio, or even the image is a, is a huge thing for us as music educators to be able to see what they are doing. And like when I was um, begging permission to still be able to Zoom with students, is that it was important for me and their learning that I see, because being a band, a band director, I need to see their, I need to see their fingers, I need to see their face. I, listening will only go so far. So, um, but this is also a way for students to build record something for you and turn it into you for feedback at a later time. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna dig right in. I'm not gonna go too super in depth in collecting assignments, but just kind of take you through what it looks like from the teacher side and the student side. And then we're gonna spend more time in Google Forms, which is probably really why you're here. So just to create a plain assignment, and I'll also show you um, how to create this um, live and what that looks like and what you need to check to make this happen. So when, if you're just creating a plain old assignment, not talking about forms right now, it's a plain old assignment, but you can create a form here, don't get me wrong. You, we all see this, you can name it, title it, do the instructions. If you click on add, this is where you can add files from Google Drive or a link or a file from your desktop and so on. If you click on create, that's where you can create a Google suite item. Um, can you create a form from here? Yes, but it wouldn't link to your classroom into the gradebook automatically. But there is a workaround that I will demonstrate and show you later. Okay. After I create this assignment, this is the student view. So the student would see, click into the assignment, not just like click on the assignment, but click and view the assignment. And this is what they would see. And on the right, they have this add or create button. If they click on that, these are the choices that they have, which is Google Drive link file, and they can even create a brand new doc, slides, sheets, or drawings. So even if um, you didn't create a document from the fill out over here and then make a copy for each student, they could create their own document to attach separately and it'll still be their own copy. Underneath this drop down menu that I froze there is the turn in button, and that's where they turn it in. For some reason, students can't find the big giant button that says turn in, but that's where it's located. Um, what I would do is I would direct them to go, don't just like click on, and I'll show you when I do this live, don't just click on the assignment one time and expect to find a turn in button because that's what's happening. They're like, well, I don't see a turn in button. Well, you have to click on view the assignment and then they'll see the turn in button. They're just not going deep enough and far enough into the assignment. Okay, once, when, when they are able to attach the work from wherever they bring it in from, I've been telling my students, save your stuff to the desktop for easy access. Otherwise, it can be going into random spaces for documents and over here in this program, over in that, and they're gonna have a hard time locating it. And this is a process I've been followed even before all this crisis happened is, where are you gonna save it? To the desktop, like, they like chant it out to me as a, just part of the process. But, um, I would recommend it when they're working, they save anything they're creating to a desktop just for easy access. They can move it around later. Anyway, so they're going to attach their work and here I attached something that I had and they could even add or create another item if they needed to or um, do that for you. And there's that pink turn button. Now pink is just because of the theme of my test class, but their button would be in the color theme of whatever color your class is. But that's where once they attach the work they can turn and they can also add private comments here or there can be a class comment that everyone would see here underneath the assignment. In the teacher view when you turn it in, um, if you've gone this deep into Google Classroom you, you've seen this and to get into their assignment to start grading it you would click on this document right here. Now I'm going to stop for one second 
about everything we're doing. And I want to point out something that's in a terrible location, but this is where it is if this is meaningful to you. If you're a CSV kind of a person and you can do you, um, and Laura, I see, uh, Lauren, I see your question about um, with students training, and I'll, I'll come back to that, okay? Um, the, if you're a CSV and you like to do everything in sheets and then import it elsewhere, this is, this is where you get that. It's not in a nice location. It's kind of hidden. I hope that Google fixes that eventually. I have sent feedback about that. But if that matters to you, great. If it doesn't, ignore what I'm talking about. <laughs> So again, you just click on this and that brings us to this view over here. I just blocked it out because I don't think anybody in here wants to read my latest um, assignment for a class that I'm taking. But um, you can assess student work right here in, on the screen. You don't have to click out of anywhere. Um, something to know if you click on this little um, arrow right up here, you can sort um, the, the turn-ins and the not turned in so they can shuffle all the turn-ins to the top and then when you click on this arrow right here it'll take you as you're grading the, the as you're grading the assignment it'll take you through all the turn-ins first you don't have to go searching for who's turned it and it just does all the turned in first and you can grade it and you can have a private comment to the student feedback you do not need to click on the return button repeatedly like for each individual student I mean but once you're done with that class, you can click on that triangle there and choose return multiple submissions. So that could also be a time saver for you as well. Sort and return multiple instead of click, search, click, search, click, 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 search, and then return, return. It's going to be a time saver for you. Then once you um, return them, it auto populates the grade straight into the grade book in Google Classroom. So in regards to just plain old vanilla assignments, what can be turned in? Any file type that I showed you where I showed you the student screen, um, back a few, here we go. Anything from Google Drive, a, a link to a website, a file from their computer, or they can create new docs. Um, you can, video, audio, and pictures fall under the term file. And the pros of this is that multiple files and file types can be uploaded to just that assignment. It also keeps everything in house, but be sure to check where it's going. And I'm going to demonstrate that live because don't be like me and I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> but um, if you don't mind having a cacophony of files, but it's all located in the assignment folder, then this method is for you. It's not the only method, but this is an option. But some, like I said, some of the cons are that in the Google folder where everything goes, it's going to be a mess of different file types and hard to navigate. And if they didn't label it with their name, you wouldn't necessarily know who was attached from if you're looking at files inside of the folder. You won't need to because you can open them right from the assignment where you're assessing it. But if that meant anything to you, then um, there you go. <laughs> options, I believe in options because everything, everyone's different and different things work better for other people than others. Um, and this is, a, I just wanted to pop in this reminder, is that if you are creating a Google Doc or sheet or drawing or slide that you want the students to um, manipulate and fill in the blank, but you're concerned about students um, changing each other's work, you have to select make a copy for each student when you create that assignment. And that will give each student their own individual copy. And that way they're not changing or manipulating others and anybody else's work. But also, and this may answer um, some of the questions, and I I'd see another question up here about uh, from Karen, I'll check that in, this, in a few minutes. Um, remind students not to click done and turn in until the items are attached. What we're finding that's happening is that some students are clicking done or turn it, or because you can mark as done without attaching anything. I think the answer is one of the questions. There's no, 
we, we've been begging, begging, begging Google to make a thing like, you can't turn this in, you've attached nothing. But in a way, that's okay because for an, doing projects outside of Google, beyond this whole assignments in Google Forms thing, sometimes I just want kids to come back and click, turn, like mark done, because they've done the assignment on like Soundtrap or something. So that's, hmm, it's kind of iffy there. But um, the, I have, to, but they're also clicking done, turn in, so they can show their parents. But look, I did it, it says turn in, yeah, I've been doing my work. And unfortunately, kids are kids. Doesn't matter whether it's 2020 or 1960, kids are kids and they're also forced into this crisis situation that's not very conducive for them in, the, in their learning environment. And they're, while well, they're not meaning any malice towards us, that they're just trying to get through the day with their own personal home lives as well. And sometimes there are kids that are just, oh, nope, forget this, I'm not doing it, turn in. Yep, I did it. And then hoping that it'll sneak through. But I, you know what I do? I kick it back. I don't grade it, I return, no file attached, try again. And that's, um, I'll be, Joel, I'll be happy to show you um, how to make a copy for each student. Please remind me if I forget. Um, I just kick it back to them. Sorry, not finished, no file attached. And try again, I literally spent an hour before this um, session working with a student just to get him to get into my soundtrack class because he didn't follow directions. But um, remind them to go, always come back to Google Classroom and double check to, set, to make sure that it says that they submitted it. If it says they submitted it, it will um, say, do you want to resubmit? So that should be a clue that they've resubmitted. Google could, should have, should have a pop-up about are you sure you don't need to attach something? And they can click yes or no. And that takes away part of it, part of the ownership, but. Um, okay, now going into this, the easiest and fastest way with as little work as possible to do this without clicking 500 million times is to create a quiz assignment. So here I've made a dummy assignment and I chose quiz assignment, and you notice that it created a blank quiz. And here's the most important, super important part. If you like the idea of not having to hand enter 250 grades for an assignment, especially if you're a course teacher, um, that this grade importing toggle switch is visible. And I'll show you how that looks when it is and when it isn't. But that's super important. And I do not recommend locked mode on Chromebooks unless you know that every single student has a Chromebook, okay? In my district, not every single student has a Chromebook, but this is what's the most important. Then you can click on this quiz and create it from there. Can you attach a pre-made quiz and have that pop up? Yes, and that can happen either in quiz assignment or an assignment. You just exit out and add your own. And of course, all of the grading, the um, points and the dates and the topics, and then you can assign to who you want to assign that to. So here I was talking about on the check where you are sending the form quiz. Um, when you create a Google Classroom, it automatically creates a, creates a classroom folder. But for some reason, the way that my district has set up, when I did that, it created a folder and then everyone in the district could see everything and all the work that my students were submitting. And there I get bombarded with notifications that there is something, that it, it was a hot mess that I had to spend a lot of time cleaning up. So I take the time every time I create a form or a doc or anything Google where it has to go to a folder, I just click on this folder in the top left hand corner and I can choose, I've made a folder that has no viewing permissions and I just drop it in there so that I know that no one else can get in there and view student work and risk that violation of student privacy. Okay, so in this dummy quiz that I've made, Instead of choosing short answer paragraph and the usuals, if you keep on scrolling on down, we get to file upload. And this is what you choose to collect different files within a Google form. You have to select file upload. I'll leave that there for a second. Okay, and now for the exciting part. <laughs> 
once you choose file upload, there'll be a prompt that says allow only specific file types. I have to put on my glasses because I can't read the screen. <laughs> Getting old sucks. Okay, so <laughs> the you, once you toggle that on, then you can select exactly which type of file that you want your students to select. They can, again, attach documents, Word doc or Google Doc, spreadsheets, PDFs, videos, presentations, uh, Google drawing, image, or audio. You can choose the maximum number of files per question or for, for that question. So for that question, they could upload either one or up to five or up to 10 per question. So depends on what you want to do, that's an option. But here's the big secret. You have to max out this file size, the individual file size to 10 gig. Then you'll get this red letter warning Oops. That says that it can no longer accept responses. Don't freak out yet. But you're going to come over here and click on the blue change. So one, max it out, two, change. And then to be able to accept multiples of large files, once you click on the change, you're going to be um, brought over to the settings for the quiz. And it says maximum size of all files uploaded. Max that puppy out to one terabyte. You could do this five million times over and never fill, never fill one terabyte. I just Marie Kondo the daylights out of my laptop onto a one terabyte external hard drive and I could probably do that at least 10, 15, 20 more times. And I have a lot of stuff on my, on my laptop as I'm sure many of you can relate. But max that puppy out because why not? It's there, okay? Um, otherwise, it will shut things down and not let kids upload. So that's important that you, even 100 gigs is a lot, okay? You can max that out to um, one terabyte and be super comfy knowing that um, there's not gonna be a problem. You can do all your settings and change all that. You can ch do all your quiz settings how you want to. And then you can add on another question, another question, another question. When you are um, going and setting up the grading and everything for the forms, you can set the point value um, you also be able to have, once you're into assessing the work, you're going to be able to have the opportunity to enter feedback, um, both just by typing, or you can enter a link for feedback or a video for feedback. And that's just a neat feature where you can provide feedback on a Google form, even to individual questions, which is kind of nice and kind of a nice feature. Okay, so this is what you're going to view after the student submits. And you can open the file right from Google Form. And I did do a dummy test of me, so at least to show you what I submitted as a, um, as a student, as a teacher. And when, when you click on the file, it'll just open the tab next door. You can view it, come back to the tab, assess and add the points, click on this next one. So I did, um, and I know it's tiny, a document, um, a PDF, an image, an audio file, and then I did a picture and a, another document because I did a two question or a two file question. Um, and you can give the points that they earned right here. And this allows you, the, the benefit of this is that you can assess each file type independently, whereas if they were, assess, if they um, uploaded several different files into so it's just a regular assignment, like I showed you earlier, um, you would be assessing all of them together in one lump, but if that's what you wanna do, that's, again, an option. But if you want to assess each item indiv individually, um, this would be the better way to go without having to create a separate assignment. Okay, once the form's all done and you've done all the, the students have uploaded their, their files and they've turned it in and you're going through and assessing it. And whether or not you're assessing, you can also add zeros for your points. If, if you're just collecting videos to use for something, just, just use zero points. You don't have to give it points if you don't want to. Um, the most important thing of all right here to get all this assessing you've just done, to get it back to auto-populate in Google Classroom, is you need to release the score. And then it will cue you to, do you want to release it? Say yes. It sends a notification of what their score is. And um, when, I, when I ran this earlier, I used my friend's um, entry on some training I did for 
um, faculty at my faculty at my school yesterday, and I gave her some fake numbers, and she's like, "What? You gave me a thirty out of fifty? Whatever." <laughs> So they, they legit do receive an email on what their score, what they received as a grade. But um, you release a score. When you go back into Google Classroom, right here, when you're into the student work, and whether it's accessed through the assignment or through the grade book, you would click on import grades. And then I'll go the loop and auto populate every single one. Now let's say that some kids do this and you do this process and then another batch of kids do this. Um, is it going to overwrite and change the previous students' grades? No, it'll just update who's ever are, are updated automatically. When you're creating a Google form, make sure that you create a name field. Otherwise, you're not gonna know who's turning it in. Um, it's, um, <coughs> excuse me, it can automatically collect emails which if it's their student name and their emails, it's not as big of a deal. But if you don't have a set to collect emails and it's not a nice and neat, pretty email that they use, um, I do also recommend like a last name, first name, name field. So some of the benefits of collecting in Google Forms is that each question gets its own folder. I have a picture of this in my next slide. And whatever files are attached to that question goes into that folder, so question one, goes into its own folder. And that's not just, the folders aren't for you to go into and assess there, it's just a storage area to have those files. And if you like to keep the like files together, this is a great method because it sorts everything out for you. It's more organized and you can assess each file individually within the form, like I said before. And, but also it keeps everything in-house. One of the biggest complaints from parents has been there's so many sites, there's so many platforms and it's overwhelming. This keeps everything in house and don't get me wrong, I love me some Seesaw. I love me some Flipgrid because that's a heck of a lot of fun. I love all those things and that's perfectly wonderful and viable but parents are kind of freaking out. Well, they have to go to Flipgrid and then they have to join Seesaw and then they have to join this. This keeps everything in house but also eliminates that student privacy concern as well. Well, in Seesaw, if you're just using the journal, everyone can see the work. Unless you're using the activities, then that locks it down a little more. Or in Flipgrid, you can keep it hidden and then release those if you want to. So there are options there, but this just eliminates them having to go to outside sources. I'm gonna talk about some ideas about easy ways for kids to make a video out of files in just a minute. That's coming up, you read my mind, Sarah. <laughs> so this is what that looks like from that form that I showed you. Each question, has its own folder. Nice and neat. I like my Google Drive nice and neat, but it's not. <laughs> so I need all the help I can get. So we're skipping this part because there's an issue with um, permissions because of having to create this on Google Classroom. But some different ideas um, for you to take away from this before I demo this live and answer some questions is if students are saying that they're having a hard time understanding how to attach a file, I kind of pay attention to that. We, and this is in part of my thank you slide, the next one, we assume that the students have a great deal of digital literacy, functional digital literacy, because they're, they've grown up on tech. They know how to operate the apps. They know how to do all the gaming apps. They know how to do all the social media apps. They know how to do all of those things, but they don't do this a lot in the traditional school setting when we're in person where they're attaching files on a computer because they're handing in the work. So they need reminders. And this is a kind of a skill that can easily be forgotten of how this happens. And what I've been doing is I've been creating how-to videos on here's how you turn it in. And I demo it as a student so that they can see exactly how to do that and stop the video and follow right along with me. Um, but one idea is that if you do employ Flipgrid, which again, I love me some Flipgrid, you can, they can download it to their desktop and then attach, attach that to the Google form without you having to go into Flipgrid and then come back out here into Google Classroom to grade. And that's a workaround, especially, especially for a student who does not have a smart device like a phone, but may have a school Chromebook. Um, most of the school Chromebooks, I believe, have a camera on them unless the school has deactivated them. Eek. Um, 
but that is a workaround. They could go onto the Flipgrid website or even on the Seesaw website and record a video and download it and upload it to the Google form without you having to go back and forth and in and out. Um, you could also have students submit themselves singing or playing to a recording with headphones on and upload it to the Google form quiz. How can they do that? Um, Soundtrap is uh, one thing I recommend is Soundtrap is free right now. I'm a big, like I've, I'm, I'm, I'm a garage band girl at heart. I'm a Mac girl at heart. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Soundtrap. It is, it is free right now. And um, you could even have them, they could record themselves right in there and just down, export the files MP3 to their desktop and whoosh, shove it into the Google form. Or if you want to collect videos, you could have them upload videos or audio and create a virtual talent show to share out with parents with permission about student faces on film. So generally, and number one rule of presenting is don't put a slide with a lot of text, but here's a slide with a lot of text. <laughs> but I will give you access to this um, at the end of the presentation. Um, there's a lot of ways to collect student work. And what I do like about it is that everything is in-house. And like I said, we assume that they have a high degree of functional digital literacy, but simplify everything, give them baby steps. Like this week for my project, my newly acquired eighth grade um, music students, they had to do, step one was join my soundtrack class. That was project one. Project two was drag in three loops and make it turned in project like little baby step projects that led to the big cumulative project and I, every single one of those had a how-to video attached to it just took a few minutes um and, and like i said i've committed to doing these like how-to videos you can um easily screen record with loom l-o-o-m and also put your face in a little bubble if you want to in the bottom corner it looks it looks pretty cool or you can record your screen like we're doing now in zoom and share that out after. Screencastify is another great um, tool. Or you can also do a screen record in quick time using the screen recording feature. So before I demo this live, this is a link to the presentation. And this is also a link to my YouTube channel where I have a walkthrough of the process from beginning to end. So they are both tinyurl.com. The first one is backslash Google PDPD. That's peer driven professional development. It's just a term that I use the, with the um, school that I work at. Um, and then the other one is tinyurl.com backslash Google PDPD video. So that will give you access to this PowerPoint presentation as well as a video walkthrough. And I'm also going to attach all of these to my website, which is chrisgilbertmusic.com. So before I go and demo this live, I am going to end questions. <laughs> Here we go, classes, okay. Um, someone said that they've been having issues with students turning in work without attaching things. Is there a way to prevent that? Like it was discussed earlier. No, there isn't. I um, think like someone suggested I wish that they had like a, a new or, or they had like a warning. Are you sure you want to turn this in? There's nothing attached. Um, so no, there's no way. Like I said, I just kick it back with no grade and say nothing's attached. They may legit just not understand how to. And I've even Zoomed with students and watched them do it and even requested remote control to show them where I can control their computer and help them do that. Um, crane slide from PDF worksheets. Yeah, nice. And my students can figure out how to fill them out, although I do put text boxes in each area to be completed. I'm having a really difficult time trying to grade the worksheets and write on them as well. It's really confusing. So um, I like that idea of the PDF, crane slides from PDF worksheets. Um, another method I've seen of that is where you edit the master slide. I did like a music meme project with my seventh graders last quarter where we did a Google Slides and I just edited the master. So in whatever I wanted locked down, I did it on that. And then I made an editable field for a photo drop-in. They just had to right click on it to switch out the photo. They can go to a meme photo generator to pick a photo to download. Um, and then I made text fields. 
Um, as far as writing on the worksheets, um, Karen, what I would recommend is that you um, make a comment, like if um, on, on the worksheets is to make a comment on the assignment, like a private comment overall. Um, there's, you could download, if it's like a good PDF and you downloaded it, you could mark it up and then upload it and send it to them. Um, but that's extra work of creating the material to send back and there's not really an easy way in Google Classroom to send files back and forth. Okay, um, where do we get a copy for each student? Okay, keep that in mind, Joel. I'm going to show that. Google could have a pop-up about attach something. Yes, I wish they would. When you return something that's not graded, you need to put a comment, right? Um, no, but I, but I do, just so that there's a paper trail. <laughs> Even though it's not a paper trail, but you, you know, it's just so I can provide, like, if the parents were, I, I could provide a report to a parent where it says, all those comments, nothing attached, nothing attached, nothing attached. And so you have that paper trail, digital paper, paper trail, so to speak. Um, so the document the student filled out, even if not attached and turned in, is still completed and living in the Google Docs. How can you use a printed quiz? So if a, if a student filled out a document and it's not attached and turned in, it's still completed and living in the Google Docs? Yes, on their, on their um, area of the drive, Karen. Does that make sense? Okay. So they could always go back and reattach it and resubmit it. And you could maybe help them find that, okay? Uh, what is the easiest way for kids to make video or audio files? I, I like Flipgrid. It's easy, it's user-friendly, and they've, they've done come a long way with, in terms of student privacy. They do not need to create an account to use Flipgrid. Um, and even that, you can even, I think it can turn off the video and just record audio. In um, Seesaw, I, I like I just I, I like going to Soundtrap EDU. There's a EDU side of Soundtrap and a non-EDU Soundtrap. So Soundtrap.com backslash EDU. It's very GarageBand-esque. If your students are familiar with GarageBand, it's an online digital audio workstation. I don't work for them. I'm getting no kickback. <laughs> I, I, I wish I was because <laughs> I've been promoting them a lot lately. But um, that is an option where they can very easily record in live and, and create very easily create an audio file with just very few steps and very little setup. Um, another way to do audio files is they can just undo voice memos on their phone. Um, whether it's Android or Apple, just open a voice memo app and usually there's a share where you can share it out as an audio file and choose where that's going. They could probably send it to their own personal drive if they have that linked up and then dread and then access that file from their Google Drive when they attach it. Does that make sense, Sarah? I have a couple of screens going on so I can't see if <laughs> everyone has, so I can't see who's like, okay, yeah, thumbs up. Um, Joanna Tan, how to share those forms and can we share to the whole class, the talent show? Okay, I'm gonna go and demonstrate the forms in, this, in a second and downloading videos takes forever. Is there a quicker way? So when you are assessing them within the Google Forms, it will open in a separate um, tab next door, and that will allow you, you can like preview it. So if you have no desire to download, and you just wanna look at it and watch it, you don't have to download it to watch it. You can just preview it in that window without having to download it. If you wanna download it to use it for something, um, but um, if, if you want to download to use for something, it does sometimes take a bit of time. But if you keep the assignments short, um, it should be easier. It's also a space sucker <laughs> on, your, on your own devices, which is the main reason why I got, I picked up an external hard drive. And actually the one terabyte wasn't, it's even cheaper now than when I bought a couple years ago. And now they have even bigger, ter bigger external hard drives. Um, and I'm, I've been up, uploading any of, the, any of those kinds of files just directly to that to keep it off of my newly Marie Kondo <laughs> laptop and desktop. Um, let's see, a few more messages and then we'll get going. I'll demonstrate this. How to protect the files again, save the quizzes to another folder, not the class folder. Um, the make a copy for every student, Joanna, I think is what you're asking. I'll demo that. Virtual talent show in Louis Spring concert. 
um, what's the best way to do that. Flipgrid's a great place to do it, but that's just shared out um, within the class. You could, um, if they upload the videos to the form and you download it, you could just drop them into a video editor of your choice, like iMovie, Windows Movie Maker. I'm, I'm not a Windows girl, so please, be, be kind on <laughs> I'm going on memory. Um, we video. There's um I, I've also used Filmora, which costs money, but I do love I do love Filmora. Soundtrap is free currently now for 90 days or through through June. Then after that it's like five dollars a seat per student. And where does all the assignments go in the class folder? Yeah, it goes um like I was um, sh sharing earlier, they um you can direct them, actually direct them where to go by clicking that little folder in the top left-hand corner by the name of what you're working on. You can direct them where to go. So, yeah, Filmora is free. There's a free version of Filmora, but it has a watermark. And, but there's some reasonable paid versions of Filmora. There's, there's different levels. And I, before they made that cheaper and more affordable for teachers, I dropped the money on it. Meh, oh well. But, um, how do I use Soundtrack? Um, one second. Joanna, can you unmute yourself and expand on that question? Did you mean Soundtrack? Uh, I mean, yes, the, oh. that one, the, okay. the one you just said. Okay, if you wanna stick around at the end, I'll be happy to do a little mini walkthrough of what Soundtrack looks like for anybody who wants to stick around at the end, okay? All right. So without further ado, I'm going to um, share my screen really quick and kind of show you this live creation aspect of it and how it looks on the teacher end. And those of you like um, Lisa, Kim Taylor, Karen Brownstein, and Terry, I mean, can you guys see my screen okay? Because you guys are just on my first, <laughs> my first list here over here. Yes. So when I click uh, create. Again, if I made it just an assignment and I named it and had the instructions, hit add. This is where I can add from Google Drive link a file or YouTube or create forms. Now, if I click on create forms and it creates a new one, you'll notice that it doesn't have that toggle that says about grade importing. So that's not going to work. But if I add from Google Drive, and I hope I still have one in here because I've done some house cleaning. Let's see if I can get that one from earlier work. Yeah. You can see how that has the grade importing of that, that. So that's, you can use a pre made Google, quiz, Google Form quiz, but um, if you haven't made it yet, then it's going to be extra steps to make it. So the better thing to do. Uh, is quiz assignment and it just automatically generates that with the great importing and then you can start to edit the quiz. So I'm just gonna call this Friday night fun because yay professional development on a Friday night. Woo! I was trying to be respectful of like school hour and zooms <laughs> nonstop during a school day. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, woo! Um, so I'm not going to get too deep into specific, but um, I just want to get you creating the questions. So, question one: um, Add a picture to this question. You can type whatever you want. Now, instead of multiple choice, I'm going to choose file upload, and it just tells you that it's going to be uploaded to to your drive. So that's, it's gonna go into, into their drive and they're gonna require to sign to Google. The, you know, the biggest issue is if you're like me, you have 5 million emails. <laughs> and I do that to keep things separate for different things that I'm involved with. But sometimes so do kids. And if I'm signed into my school email and I try to, or I'm signed into my um, personal email for a Gmail and I'm trying to do my school work, it, it doesn't, it won't let you be assigned into both at the same time. And then students are like, oh, but I can't get in, I can't do it, because they're, they or someone else in their family, if they're sharing devices, are signed into Google somewhere. I tell them to sign all the way out of every, sign out of all accounts. And what I, so I click on here and then 
sign out. Sometimes it says I sign out of all accounts. Uh, anyway, continue. So here's where you can toggle on allow specific file types and you can choose. So I said I want to add a picture. So I'm going to choose image to this one. Maybe I want the student to show me how they're playing a side C on the saxophone with the B in the side in the side key. And I want to see a picture of that. I can choose a maximum. They can choose up to five, but they don't have to choose five, but one five or maximum of 10. And this is where you want to max this out. The um, default is 10 megabytes, but once you choose anything else, it's going to give you this warning. And you click on change, and that brings you to the settings. And right here, maximum size of all files uploaded. And I'm just going to max that puppy out. And it says this form will stop collecting responses once the total size of all file uploads reaches the limit specified by this setting. There's no if if your if if your students are maxing out one terabyte, you must be teaching like five thousand students because there's no way you're going to be maxing this out if you use one terabyte. Let's save. Um, and then when you click on the answer key, you can determine how many points. You don't have to click add answer feedback. It doesn't do anything special yet. And you click done. Oh, what did I not do? I did not create a name field. Last name, first name. You don't have to apply any points. You can just leave it as zero. So even if you didn't want to grade, you could still um, create like zero points and it's not a big deal. Maybe give it like a point just to, just to like checked off, collected, give them one point. And then if you wanted to go on the next question, same process, file upload, type your question, um, specific file types, you can, if you want to do video or audio, you could do that. Well, in that case, you want to max, you want to maybe put this to five, max this out. But because you've already set it to one terabyte, you don't have to change it again because it's already set as one terabyte. I see that the chat has some questions. I'll look at that in a second. Go to the answer key, give it the points, I'm done. And you can repeat this as many or as little Time as, times as you want. Now up here in the top left hand corner, here's that folder I was talking about earlier. And I created like a dumping area called cleanup. <laughs> but notice that there's no permissions on it. So I'm going to move it to there so it doesn't bug anybody. And then it keeps it all like no one else can get in there without permissions. And responses would start to appear here. So in, I created this form for you guys to do, but because of the school and all the firewall and all, it wasn't working. But I create, I responded to it really quick. And here's what this looks like. And this is my email. Feel free to write this down and reach out. It's chrisgilbertmusic at yahoo.com. And notice how it has the add individual feedback on each one. You can click on it here and do it, or you can do this in a second. So I'm not going to give any points for the email. I'm not going to give any points for the name. So please attach, I just click on this and it pops open in the window next door. I do have five people on the internet at home, so it's a little, <laughs> it's a little on the slow side. Okay, so you can read it. Cool. Come back right here to this tab. Good job. I'm going to give myself eight points because my grammar wasn't that great in that. Um, or here's, oh, sorry, that, that was a picture. If I open the picture, you can just view it here. That's me at Pikes Peak with my purple hair last summer. Rest in peace, Modern Band Summit. I'm going to miss you this year. Okay, um, the, okay there's my eight points for that picture. I did the 10, I can open a document. Again, I'll open in a tab. Right next door, I'm just gonna close these others. And it's, it's an empty document that I uploaded, but it's there. I'll give myself a five on that one. And here's a video of me. We're not gonna waste time watching that nonsense. Terrible video, I'm gonna give it a three. And I did a March Listening Madness project with my students. 
and then um, let's say that I wanted to add feedback on this. And just enter. Nice job. Or I could link for feedback or make a video for feedback on YouTube. You can edit it or you can delete it as well. And then do you have any specific questions for me? No. It's a zero point question anyway. 10 and I hit save. So when you go through this whole process with all your students, then, or like whoever's turned it in and you're sitting down and grading, even if it was like 20 out of 40 students, you want to release the score. And then you'll get the, me the message that you can send a message with it, or you just click it and go, send emails and release. That's just coming to me at school, it's not a big deal. So then it says score released, and it shows you when the last time is that the score has been released. Okay? And I will show you that in one moment. So if I wanted to see the score, you notice it has 36 out of 50 in the points. That's just on the student side, this is how it would look. And there's a feedback of nice job. So not only did it update the form, it also updated everywhere, even live. So back in Google Classroom, if I go to grades, I'm not in this one, let me, Okay, so I have to fill it out as a as the high school sub. So give me a hot second. I'll sign out of all this. And I'll show you this when I do this as a high school as a student so that you can see that happen. See this is when we make you have to sign out of every single <laughs> possible Google thing. Okay. The school was um, very nice and gave me access so I could see these things happen as a student. So that was, it's been very beneficial when I'm setting up my classes and stuff. So here is the test class. This is how it looks to the student. View assignment, go all the way in. That's what's talking about how you have to go all the way in. I'm not gonna add or create here, I'm just going to do this really quick. I didn't require that. And this was attach a picture. You can choose my drive. Or you can choose um, from your device. And notice how it only highlights what is available as that file type, so you don't have to rifle through the different types of files. And that's not a very interesting picture, but I'll upload it. And the PDF, I'm just gonna go to my drive so I can do this quickly. Document, my drive, Uktastic ukulele, ukulele, excuse me, a video. I think I have one in here, yep. And any two files, any mini, my knee. Let's do an audio and I'll do a video, even though I've already done one. And no, submit. All right, then I have to sign out of everything and go back in. Almost there. I should have Jeopardy music playing. <laughs> All right. Classwork, grades. All right. Aha, there we go. So now if I click on the form, I respond. I'm going to go down here to the edit pencil. 
and that's how I get to the responses without having to go search for the form somewhere else. I just click on that pencil individual. So here is the high school sub one that I just did. I'm just going to run through this real quick. So you can watch this import because this is the part that I think is the most important part of all of this. Hit save, release the score. Send emails and release. And I come back here and watch over here next to high school sub when I click import grades. And there they go. Now, if this was a class of 25 or 40 or 250, whatever the class size is, all of the ones that you just graded would automatically populate into your grade book. And it's there. So I think that's probably the handiest part of all of this is the ability to assess right there in the form and then import, release a score and import the grades. Um, someone asked me about creating files for making a copy for each student. So I'll share that really quick. So if I want to create an assignment, I'm just going to name it nonsense. And I wanted them to edit a doc. It will cue me to create the doc. Then right here in the assignment in Google Classroom, students can view file, edit file, make a copy for each student. That's what you want to select. So if you want students to edit something, then each student gets a copy of that. And that's how you would make sure that they're not either this way or when the students attach a file separately that they've created would be the other way. Okay, I'm going to go back to the chat here for a second. Is Soundtrap free? Yeah, you, you can make a fillable PDF. Uh, a Kami extension is what I've heard. I haven't used it personally, but I've seen that people mention that a lot. Um, is Soundtrap free? Yes, right now through the end of June. The, yeah, the sevens go in the class folder that's created or somewhere else that you can direct it to go to. And um, at the end of the year, if I choose to delete a folder for the upload videos, will students still have access in their drive? Yes, because that's going, those files are going into your drive. So they still have access to those files in their drive. For files students should download at the materials, it's still better to give a copy. I, I think it's just better to give a copy to each student. Um, but if they're creating it on their own outside of just on their own and then making their own video, their own um, document or whatever, then they can just create their own and attach it. Can I please demonstrate in real time how to attach a PDF that was converted to a slide students view and how I can make corrections on the slide. And then a parent wants permission to access a drive. Is that okay? Parents um, shouldn't be accessing the drive per se. But you can invite parents into the guardians feature in Google Classroom that gets, just gives them access to a port of what the work is that, that they are doing. Can I export grades from Google Classroom to a spreadsheet? I'll share that really quick. So this is what I was kind of talking about, um, <coughs> excuse me, earlier, is in the assignment. Yeah, once you click into, I'll do that more time because I did click through that pretty quick. I went to the classwork and to the assignment I made. I had clicked on view assignment. It's not, in a, it's not in a nice place, but right here there's a gear. You can copy all your grades to Google Sheets or download as a CSV, and that's where you can get them after you've graded them. So if that's your, if that's your jam, that's where you would go. <laughs> get them. And then um, attach the PDF. Um, do you, Karen, do you mean that um, like how to edit the master slide? Like with a PDF? Okay. Um, where are the parent access options? Yeah, yeah hi. Um, should I talk? Or? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I have all of these fantastic music 
worksheets, theory mm -hmm. worksheets. And um, so I've been creating slides from them, you know, mm -hmm. um, as background so the kids can write on those background slides, mm -hmm. but they're sending me blanks and they're not sure, even though I put text boxes in each space for them to write in, they're sending me blank. Um, I think that they're just not, I think they are trying to fill it out, although some are very confused about how to fill it out, but they're, they're not um, submitting them in their completed form. And I, as their teacher, I've not been able to easily um, mark those who have filled out the forms correctly to like put X's on the incorrect answers and write comments. It just seems really hard. So I'm looking at if that's doable or if there are alternatives. In, to, in terms of using all those amazing worksheets I have rather than having mm -hmm. to spend hours recreating them. Okay, let me dig into this for you. Okay, so let's go back into my test and do classwork and I'll create an assignment. <clears throat> so first in the assignment, make sure that you make a copy for each student. Um, that way they're not editing each other's work. And then in Google Slides, you'll go to Slide and then Edit Master. Now I would even go through here and delete everything that you are able to, just so you don't have a bunch of different choices and everything. Um, then, so there's like auto saves, so this should be done. And then I can undo that or get out of that. So now to do the PDF, let me go into my clean folder, which is not really clean. <laughs> Just shoving everything there to make it look neater for right now. And find a JPEG or find a, find a PDF, excuse me. So my slides just went away when I did that. Interesting. I haven't imported as a, a PDF on there, but what I have done is like when I'm editing the master, um, you can choose the background color to be a certain color. And then you can even add a text box that you don't want changed with directions. And then when you're out of this, they can't do anything no matter how much I click on this. But if I wanted to make something editable, I want to insert a picture. Insert image. I even like, I found like a image, like a, image image of a placeholder image um, and drop it in there because then they can right click it. I'll, I'll do that really quick. Um, I'll drop in my doodle juice zoom background that I use. I love making doodle juice big screen. But so notice I can't change directions but if I right click on it you can change from the post-it note from wherever they want to the post-it note. So. so with that being said, if I did a snapshot, I know that this is not like a worksheet, but I'm just going to snapshot it really quick. And I can drop that. Actually, I'm going to drop this into the master. So slide, edit master. And then let's like pretending that this was one of your worksheets. Okay. When I X out of this, I can't 
do anything to it, but I could have a text box. Let's just because I don't have any worksheets ready. You could have an editable text box where they can type their answer on it. So while they have the worksheet available, not obviously not this. Good night, buddy. Um, but they could then edit the answer. You could just type in type answer here. They can't change this and move this around. They can't change this, move it around. They can only activate that. And then when you do when you create this, and because you're sending it out to a copy for each student, they each get their own individual copies of that. Did that answer your question? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was able to create the background, um, you know, using, I think it's, what is it, SNP or something? Or yeah, SNP yeah, SNP snipping tool on PC, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, no, the issue is I want to see from the student's perspective how they fill it out and then how they submit it correctly. And then once it's submitted correctly, how do I write on it to grade it? Okay. Creating it was okay. I, I was able to find tutorials to do that. It's okay. I will, I just assigned what I made um, to the class and I'm going to log out. I'm going to share this and log out as a teacher and log back in as a student. Okay. This is why I wish that Google Classroom would allow like a teacher and student view. <laughs> To avoid this kind of a thing, but it's doable. Such a process. Okay. So here's the Google Slides thing I just made. This is what it looks like to a student. I can't click on change anything, but I can change my answer in that field. And because they all get saved a drive, they don't um, need to to share is to share a link. They don't have to go through that process to turn it in. So when I'm gonna go back into that as a teacher, So there's what I typed as a student, and then I just add the comments, post it, and click on return. This is the, the arrow I was talking about before where you can sort the term in, but I don't have this populated with students in this one. Return it. And then in my grade book, it's there. I can return it again. Now it says not turned in because it's a Google slide, but it's turned in. And that's kind of a, a glitchy thing in Google. I hope that answered it. Okay, so um, you click share instead of... No, I was, I was just showing that they don't have to click share. Like that could be like as a student, the students may say, "Click share." Like I click share, and now what do I do? They don't have to click share unless they wanted to get the link to attach to the turn in as well. But it's not necessary. 
to click the share when, when they are editing it. So after the student writes, I'm sorry guys that okay. I'm being so funny. <laughs> this has been driving me crazy for two weeks. So once they fill it out, how do I get it? How does the teacher get it? Once it, it, it just, it, it automatically saves in the drive. It they just, have to attach it. They have to attach it. Nope. It's a file. How do I get it from their drive? It's a, it, 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 it automatically links it when you um, created, when I created the slide. One second. When I created the assignment. And I chose create slides. I chose create a copy for each student. I chose um, right. yeah, the select the make a copy for each student. And when they go in and edit it like I did, it everything's connected already for you. So, okay. So um, I noticed that you were able to give them comments about it, but you were, did not actually write like if if they have like ten answers that they have to fill out and they get them incorrectly. I can't exit. I mean, it's like, it's just a real hassle because then I have to make a separate text box for myself to put an X next to an incorrect answer. Um, so on the, on, on, on the Google Forms, when you're doing it, if, if, you, if you're in Google Forms and do it individually, that's, you, can, you can comment on each thing. But just doing this like with the slides, um, I'll get into this here. Can you turn an existing PDF into a Google form that's fillable? Um, you would have to link outside of the form. Okay. If, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, okay. thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the chat here for a second. Oh, the parent access options. If I go to people, and then you can invite guardians, remove guardians. When you invite guardians, you'd have to type in your email. Um, yeah, that's how, that's how you invite guardians. I can, we use school tools that I have to get like the email list off a of school tool and start typing email. And I've also been able to just, when I click on, I just I just hit print and send it as a PDF. Is another I just like literally from this screen, and I came in view details. It, I just hit print as a PDF if there's anything I want to share, and that just saves a PDF instead of using it, actually printing printing it by paper. Um, CSV is comma separated value. It's for it's a term for ex, for Excel, and can you can she send you a worksheet to try? If you want to, if you want to email me, I could try, but they always connect that way. Please make a student account and see. I can't make an extra student account, so I have to actually invite them from my from my school. Just make an account and a, make a trial class. Then I just do an account. Well, like some some schools don't um, allow us to. Ha like they have a lockdown so that we can't create. A student, like I, I invited my students according to their school email, but I, I, I'm not able, the only reason I can create a student account for me to view is because they gave me that special high school sub email. But there, I know other people who have schools that have actually made a dummy account for this purpose. Um, it's great they don't have to click share. Yeah, exactly. It's one less step, but it's, Frankly, I would want to click share and then I'd be confused as to what to do. So that's why I just, in the instructions, don't click share, just fill it out, it gets saved, and then you can see it automatically like I showed you. And the drive just automatically saves the changes. Yeah, links to your drive, not the student drive, correct. Yep, Cami extension, maybe a better way to fill it out. No district money for subscriptions, that is great to know. Yeah, um, but when they're sending it back, um, Red, I, I have to wonder if some of that is 
them just not saving it before they send it back. We're just missing a step somewhere, okay? Phones can edit PDFs. You can also um, edit photos um, on a phone or an iPad as well. Okay, um, are there any other questions that you guys have about this Google stuff? And then if anyone wants to stick around, I can, I'm more than happy to demonstrate Soundtrap as well. But um, thank you for coming tonight. Do you know if, if you have any friends about, um, or friends that could benefit from this? I'm doing this as a repeat session. On Sunday at 3 p.m., I'll be making a separate event for that with a, uh, with a separate um, Zoom invite code. Um, Kelly says, when I loan a assignment for class and made a copy for students, sometimes it comes up blank on classroom. This has been something I've seen a lot in different um, forums, especially in the Facebook groups, is two things people have said that just makes it appear, or three things. One, making a comment on the assignment suddenly makes it appear. Two, going all the way into assignment and not just the initial click, but all the way into the view assignment and going that way sometimes just makes it magically appear. It's a known glitch. And number three, um, reassigning it to the student. Um, someone I saw experience where the student joined the class after the assignment was made, so they couldn't see the assignment, but once they reassigned it to them directly, it popped up. It's a known glitch. Send in your feedback to Google, maybe they'll finally fix it. <laughs> Can you lock a text box? Yes, just set it on the, when you're editing the master slide, just set it, set the text box in there. Can you send us an attendance certificate? So if you want, if you want or need an attendance certificate, if you could please in the chat right now, because I can save this chat. Um, if you could enter your email, you can send it to me privately or publicly. And I will snag that and I'll be happy to email you out an attendance certificate. And you can enter your name on it, but I'll sign off on the rest of it and make it look nice and pretty for you too. If there's any special information, um, let me know if that needs to be on there as well. Well, you're very welcome. I really hope that this was helpful, especially because we as music educators, we need to be able to see what our kids are doing and hear what they're doing. At the very least, it's a great way to collect um, video and audio files um, for your students, also in a private fashion as well. And if anybody wants to stick around and check out Soundtrap with me for some bonus content, I'm still recording, so you can always um, access that content later if you want. I know it's late, and I want to be respectful of your time as well. Thank you for coming. Hang in there. We will get through this together. Don't hesitate to reach out. I'm going to put my email into the chat one more time so you can have that. It's Chris Gilbert Music at Yahoo. And my website is chrisgilbertmusic.com. Cheesy, I know. <laughs> but um, feel free to check out there, and I'll be posting a link, a recording of this session, as well as access to the PowerPoint, everything else that I've mentioned. All right, thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful weekend. Get some rest. Step away from some school stuff. You take care of you. Take care of number one. Take care of your friends and family. By social, distance, by social distancing. If you want to stick around, feel free to stick around. I'll be happy to show you a little bit of soundtrack as well. So you can so when you are initially going to Soundtrap, you have to use your school email and the website that you're gonna to go to is soundtrap.com backslash edu backslash. And then you would click start as a teacher. And because you're a teacher, you get a 120 day free trial, all features, no strings attached. And I like Soundtrap so much, I actually purchased this for myself personally because I was so impressed with it. You just enter information in the school information and then you create your free 120 day um, free trial, which is great because it gets you through this time. And if you don't want to go beyond this, um, then you don't, you don't have to, but you may fall in love with it. So fair warning. <laughs> and there is an education side as well as 
um, a non-education side, just like in BandWeb, which is another online DAW website, which I use. Um, the non-education site, there's no control over content, so be fair, fair warning, go to the EDU side. And there is no questionable content on the EDU side, or and there's no way to access the questionable content. Okay, um, if you just wanna like click in and create some stuff, I'm just gonna stop sharing for one second to make sure that I'm sharing my computer audio, okay. To start, you just click on music. And if you move your mouse around here in the middle, you have access to loops, a patterns beat maker, player keyboard, add a new track, import file, invite a friend, because what's cool about this is you can collaborate. I actually had a cute little pair of a French, a French horn duet um, who unfortunately their solo festival got canceled, but they were able to record in their parts right here in Soundtrap separately apart across the town and we create a recording of them playing a duet together. But um, it is, they have loops that you can use and browse to create music. You can also record voice or an, on a microphone. You can also um, attach a guitar or an amp. I have my, I think I have my uke attached or Maybe not, um, but there's all kinds of ways to create music, but like for a microphone, use this, whether it's voice or instrumental, and for like a plug in your guitar or a bass or an electric uke, you would use this. These are just access to different sounds, like if, if you're gonna use a keyboard to play the different sounds. I don't have my keyboard plugged in right now, but you very, you can, I can just, I have like a Williams 88 key and has a USB, I can just plug it right into my computer and USB port. Um, for the loops, you can sample them. Can you guys hear that? Okay. And you just drag it in, it's, like I said, it's very garage band esque You can drag it out, make it shorter, do whatever you want with it. And you can layer it up, so maybe now I wanna bring in a guitar Let's, cool. For time's sake, I'm just gonna <laughs> pick and drag. I have no idea what it's gonna sound like, but that was B minor, I think. And you can even um, transpose it by clicking on the track and edit, transpose. I'm gonna change this to G. So that's kind of a cool feature and they use letters for the transposition instead of um, half steps or minus one, minus two, and oh wait, minus one means a half step and minus two is a whole step and trying to, wait, what's a fifth? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and try, try <laughs> count it out. I'm just pulling up the chat here. Okay. Um, the, so the, you can, they have, they have all kinds of, they even have like new ones. Maybe not that one. You can always exile and go back to the star. Let's do I'll bring the synth. We'll find out what that sounds like with that. And of course you can start it later if you want to. So drag in loops is one feature. And then delete. Get rid of these for a second. You can also record in your voice. And one thing that I do recommend, when I hit record, I don't know how this will sound on your end. It'll probably sound normal to you, but if I recorded to a beat, you would notice that it's, there's a lag behind it. If you have monitoring on, when you go to record, it's gonna be like a half second behind, which is kind of driving me <laughs> A little crazy right now, so it's making it hard for me to talk. But you can turn it off, and then you don't hear that echo chamber that's delayed by a half second. I'm like the dog from Up, it's like, and I hear it, and I have to pay attention to it. Then I can't function. I start slurring my words. I know it's Friday night at nine, almost nine thirty, but not quite yet. But um, the 
and you can choose your input. I have a blue snowball. I love it. It's great. Cheap. $39.99, I think I paid for it. Best Buy curbside pickup. It was great. I need to shop like that all the time because I'm not a shopper. It was great. I drove up and they dropped it in my car. Awesome. Or if I just use the built-in microphone, which is what would show up for most people. Um, so if I click and record, and I can turn on the metronome down here, I want the tempo to be, let's do 120. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. And there's even a little reverb on this. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. And I'm gonna take off the reverb. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. Kind of cool feature. You can also play with panning left and right if you want to, and the volume as well. If you click on the voice, you can choose different effects to apply to it. So here's the echo effect. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. go, go, go. There it is. <laughs> you can hear it there at the end. So there's different, I'm gonna put that back to with the mobile mic enhancer. Um, so what I've done is with my sixth graders, I dragged in a recording of Alien Invasion, which is a song that we're playing. I'll just drag it out for a second. And I dropped this right into the project. Now I think that tempo is faster than 120. I think it's 132. I could be wrong, but I'm just guessing here. Um, I'm not going to adjust right now. I will, I'll redo this recording really quick. <laughs> click on the chunk, press delete. I'm going to click here, but activate this track. When I click record, I'm going to listen to the recording and match that match recording for now. One, two, ready, go. Now I know, I can see that I started it here. And I can slice it, I click on the track and it's edit split region or command E on a Mac. And this is available for PC and Mac for both all platforms. I'm gonna shove that over here and make this start about here I think one two ready go so I'll go off. one two ready go make it start at two that makes sense one two ready go so if I was checking out the uh, tempo actual tempo that'll be more accurate and I could set that down here so that that would be accurate so then I have my students and I have it pre-set up the microphone and I just rename it your part. And I'll show you the education, the um, classroom side of it and everything. And all they have to do is just go in and I've already set up everything. I've changed it to monitoring off. I tell them to wear their headphones and they just have to click the red button. And then to turn it in, they have to click save. Now what's kind of cool about this, I talked about the collaboration is you just click on the people button over here you can invite others to collaborate on the project with you and they would get a message saying, hey, they've invited you, do you accept? And you accept and then you can alter within the project as well. I'm just gonna cancel that for now. So that's kind of a really cool feature is how students can collaborate across the miles. Um, for the beat maker, another way to do that is that you can- One, design. two, ready, go. One. I'm just gonna delete this track for now. And I'm going to mute this. That's solo mute. This is where you can play with automation, volume, and the record activator. Um, I want to make some beats. So let's see. I'm going to give a kick. 
one and one and so this is beat one beat two beat three beat four i don't want to snare on two and four one and two Okay, cool, I like that. You can add parts. So instead of drum machine sound, you can change the drum machine sound to sound like something else. You can also, students, like for my percussionists, they don't have percussion instruments at home. They click on instrument, like, okay, you're gonna use letter A for the bass drum and play your bass drum part in. So they could essentially, let me turn these back on. And I'm going to make up a bass drum part because I don't have that part memorized right now. I'm in the drum track. One, two, ready, go. Now because of the Zoom sound sharing, it's a little delayed, but in real time, in person, off of Zoom, it's exactly lined up. So my bass drummer was able to tap in his rhythm right along with the recording as if he were actually playing the bass drum. Is it a perfect bass concert, bass drum sound? No. Does that exist in here? No. <laughs> They're all drum, drum kit sounds. But if you can find a drum, a bass drum, kick drum that's as close as possible to a concert bass drum. That's an option. Um, let me pull up a project of mine, um, or I'll, I'll go into the, I'm um, gonna show you, when you create a project, you can make an assignment out of it. <clears throat> so here is this song I just created, and I can create assignment. And I can share it right with my Google Classroom. And I can choose the Google Classroom, or if you're in Microsoft Teams, you could do Microsoft Teams. Or you could just share using a link to your class as well. Or if you only want it for certain students, you could just assign that link to certain students for sure. But that's a really sweet advantage of Soundtrap is that it integrates directly with Google Classroom. I'm not going to go all the way in and assign it, but just, just to show you what that looks like. Choose class. Um, I'll, choose, I'll choose my test class so that I'm not bugging anybody. And then it'll just create an assignment right here. Open right up. And there's that link to Soundtrap. So you can create this assignment to Soundtrap right from Soundtrap right into Google Classroom, it's all integrated, which is really awesome. And um, to show you what something would look like, here is here's my bells and whistles French horn. So these are my, these are my cute little French horn girls. They're in sixth grade. Bless their little hearts. They just love the French horn. I can't wait to see them when they're older and more advanced. They're going to be so good. I can't wait. So what I did is I recorded a click track and I did a keyboard rendition of their part. So they had a part to play along with. And this is what they recorded in. I haven't edited this yet. Sixth graders are playing harmony on French horn. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that, <laughs> personally. Um, but they each recorded these tracks separately and you can see that we could communicate like they had some struggles learning it but they're my they're, they're high flyers and I could coach them through it even just right here in Soundtrap and um, I recently recent, and then I have a, I'm doing a band I'm in the middle of a band project we just started this week where I'm asking my sixth grade band students to record playing along to the recording and when you create an assignment what that looks like when it loads is 
everything's kind of open right now, so I'm uh, band together. Oh, I've got more assignments in there. There's only two earlier. <laughs> so we can see that a couple of students have already submitted their parts. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste those parts into a master file and create a big mass band recording of them performing together, even though they're not together. Literally just copy, paste. In this window, copy over here, paste. This window, copy, this window, paste. And um, that's been really cool for my students. They're really excited about, about that project. And they, it's, it hasn't been too bad with coaching. I, having the, play, having the walkthrough videos of how to hand it in and do everything has been a significant help. Um, now I'm gonna share something that I did outside of school just to show you what's possible. Um, I just did a virtual ukulele ensemble with a bunch of little kids rock teachers. Why is this back in my EDU? Log in to this one. Okay. Still put me back because I'm all like logged into Google everywhere. This is why. Oh, irritating. I love Google, but this is the irritating part. <laughs> I can't be logged in multiple places. Um, but let me get um, into that Google and then I'll show you that project. I think that's worth sharing as a possible idea. I know it's getting late, so thank you for sticking around. I appreciate it. My next feedback to Google is to avoid this. <laughs> All right, now let's try for me to log into this. Log out. I know this is not fun watching me click through this. <laughs> Sorry. All right, please. Ooh, supreme. Wow, okay. So here is my virtual ukulele project that I just posted today. This is 49 music teachers from across the United States, and they all submitted videos to Count on Me by Bruno Mars. And then I changed their extensions to MP4 and I dragged them as a batch into Soundtrap, and then I lined everything up with the click track recording of Count on Me that I provided to them. And this is a pretty easy solution to the whole virtual ensemble thing. I've done a couple of them now, and let me tell you, it's not a show up in a Zoom and record it. There is no live option. There is no live. One more time, there's no live option to this. And while well, that's, uh, before I go ahead and experience that together so you can spread the love about how this is not possible live. But here is 49 tracks of everyone. And here's the Count Me click track. I'll solo that for a second so you can hear it. That sounded One, like. two, ready, go. With the crit. If you have Okay. And then I edit it, every single video down to start where it needs to start. And that's, that's what 49 tracks looks like. <laughs> that's a lot. And then at the end of it all, I did fade out on it, on each individual track. And then when I shared it out, I took out um, the Count on Me backtrack. And to do a fade out, it's just edit, fade out, and it automatically plays. If I do it to the click track here, then I can take that off. You can adjust it. 
like so. So, and here's what that sounds like with that turned off. Just a little, just a little snippet of it. So you can see that um, some people's videos were a lot louder than others. So I just went through and played with the volume. Just right here on this knob, I just dragged it up or dragged it down, like so. And um, some had some like background noise or they didn't use headphones. I had to unfortunately turn them off um, or turn them down in the mix a little bit. But um, that's, that's, I didn't really do super heavy duty editing on it. Every, every file um, enters with a little bit of reverb already placed on it. So I could play around with that reverb if I wanted to just by clicking on this little dot there. So if I wanted Kalina to have a little more um, reverb or bass or treble, I can play with that right there. So that's a very super fast version of Soundtrap. And I also did this with a modern band. We did um, All Star by Smash Mouth. And we use these as message to our students that we're thinking of them and that we're there with them emotionally, even though we can't be there with them. And um, it's been a really fun project to work on, but it is hours and hours of editing, but I do it because I like it and I enjoy the techie stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to unmute everyone because I want us to experience this of why you can't do a Zoom rehearsal live and in person. If you haven't experienced this yet, this is a whole new level of chaos. <laughs> so I'm going to unmute everyone. And we're all going to clap four quarter notes. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, go. Even just with that, you can see there's like kind of like gunfire going across the place. Now let's try to sing. Do 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 do. I'm not a singer. Don't judge. Do 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 do. That's it together. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Do 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 do. Ready, everybody, hold your chorus. Bum 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 bum. Two, ready, go. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a great hallelujah chorus fail up there that's absolutely delightful to watch and hilarious but this is why we can't i'm just gonna mute you guys all again i love you but i'm just gonna mute you um <laughs> this is why we can't do zoom rehearsals and i don't um pretend that the videos i make um with the virtual ensembles are zooms and unfortunately the media promotes them as zoom meetings and rehearsals and I wish they would say that they are not because it's making admins put ridiculous demands on their um, teachers. Like, oh, you're a music teacher, you should do a live. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's, it's hours of audio and video editing. Is it impossible? No. Is it, are there, are there easier programs to use than others? Yes. And I actually have a blog post on my website all about the process. For the first go around, I'm about to post my second go around thoughts on that as well. Um, but if you're interested in that and want to hear more about that, feel free to reach out um, to me. And um, again, I thank you guys for joining me tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask away, unmute, stick around, whatever you want to do. Uh, blessings to you all and stay strong and we will get through this. It'll be okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Take care. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a great night. Did you have a question, Jonathan?
All right, if not, I'm going to go ahead and you may have stepped away and I apologize if you're Jonathan and you see this there in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and remove you. Have a great night, stay safe.